this is a little more clear cut. He's going up against. Uh, there we go. Yep. Yeah, he he was going up against a hunter there, so it is going to be the board clear rogue. Yeah, yeah. and this is a good matchup for him. Uh, rogue rogue matches up pretty well with this this type of hunter. Oh yeah, I mean you get blade flurry at any given point in the game. You can you can whiteboard very easily. Um, let's see actually what he's going to draw into. Animal companion and bluegill warrior is what's kept here. Just trying to keep as much damage on the board. Yeah, that's very tough when all of your cards are sitting at the same mana. It's, uh, it's not as bad as you think, though, because, again, the, you know, the rogue is a class that doesn't heal itself. That's true. So, that's um, if true. He's, if he's got to remove this with his weapon, he's going to be in bad shape, actually. So he's got a backstab. I think he has to use it, but, too. You know, again, the hunter has a couple more. I mean, if the animal companions turn to hogger, then that's the hunter's going to be looking good. All right. Well, we'll see Let's what he see gets here. out here in a second. Let's see if he goes straight for the coin into an animal companion. No, uh, he's probably going to do the... Yep, he's going to do the... Oh, he got a oh, hogger. Oh, I okay. heard it. There we go. It's the most frustrating feeling in the world whenever you hear that coming at you yeah, and that little snort. A, yeah, but the smart play by the loot hoarder last round, right. anticipating a play like this. He'll be able to remove it. And he can even throw another one out there yep, if he so he desires. Yeah, throw another one out there. Uh, Blade Flourish is pretty good because, of course, now he has a turn set up where he can uh, he can throw up the dagger, he can deadly poison. This is all at turn five, of course. And then he can Blade Flurry afterwards after doing three damage right. with the weapon in the first place. That's right. And that's pretty much what Blade... I mean, it's going to be used to just remove that, you know, kind of a post-unleash the hounds type of play, I think. Right. Um, okay, so we can remove that if he... I mean, yeah, I mean, backstab uh, with the loot hoarder here is not terrible. I mean, he could potentially Blood Mage Thalnos, backstab, and then just clear it with the weapon. He doesn't get the card, but, I mean, he retains an extra attacker next turn if there's anything yeah, that comes at him. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's, uh, that's probably the proper play there. It looks like that's what he's going to do. So he retains another 2-1, and that gives him four attacking power next turn, which is very nice. Yeah. And both those cards draw for him, too, so it's not the end of the world. He removes it with... Uh, actually, you kind of want him to play on this round or something against, like, this type of board. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just going to be a bluegill warrior for now. Looks like he's going to go straight to the face. Now, this is always the problem with the hunter, though, is that um, as we saw in the last game, it's not over till it's over with them. They can oh. keep doing damage. Yeah, they can. They can almost probably average four damage a turn at, at time, like once you get to a certain point. So um, he's just going straight for the face here. Blade Flurry is going to work out great, given that every single one of those cards has one health there, and you know he's going to retain the board here. But again, the hunter's in, he's not in bad shape. And I agree with not attacking right there yeah. because he can deadly poison and get double advantage from it next turn. Yep. And he has yep. nothing to go after. It's not like he's trying to rush the hunter down. He just wants to keep applying damage. Yep, he's going to be down to 11. He's got explosive trap, so he's really down to 9 here. Right. Um, so, again, the rogue is just so focused on just removing that board that, you know, you, you blink an eye and you're down to single-digit health. That's right. Against the hunter. And he's got to start drawing cards. That's a good decision there, I think. He has to, All right. He has to put up a taunt. I mean, yeah. I think that's... I think maybe he could wait one more turn for that, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, I wouldn't risk it at this point. Leroy, a Leroy uh, yeah. on these hounds actually kills you. So um, yep, you're absolutely right. Okay, so Hunter's Mark doesn't really have a good play here. And there's starving buzzard, so that's half of the combo. Yep, exactly. And this is where the rogue, the rogue's got to hope that he can catch up, catch up in damage here in the next this actually this this turn right here. This right. is a big turn. Okay, so. Hunter's Mark is applied. That ensures a board clear in case uh, any of those creatures decide to attack into it. SI7 Agent is going to apply a little bit of damage, but uh, not going to be enough. Yeah, he's going to get the draw card draw. That's kind of why he uh, exploded the trap. Didn't want to hurt his new units, too. Right. But he's he's going to be down to seven health, and the hero power is going to you know, deal two, two damage from the Hunter, too. So uh, right. he's got he's to draw. He's got to draw for a win here. Okay. Starving Buzzard. And it hits. Uh oh, here we dun, go. Dun, dun, dun. That's, uh, oh, that's Golem, close. That's six damage. It's, it's and that close. means it's that close. means is there a way for this rogue to have lethal next turn? Because otherwise he just dies to uh, to he the hero power. He needs to draw at least the taunt. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to give him an extra mana, so he's going to be working with nine mana, which is actually fairly relevant here. Oh. Wow. Interesting. Okay. I figured yeah. he would. He's really worried about getting killed next turn. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I think he was worried about getting killed more so than he was worried about maybe taunting there. Yeah, I guess so. And he draws into, let's see, that's five damage. 
Let's see, does he have it with the uh, with the eviscerate? That's going to be three. No, that's that's nope, only uh, eight damage. But the hunter doesn't have lethal yet in his hand. So. Oh, you're right, because so. uh, he decided not to go after that arcane golem. Yeah, I'm thinking Rise of Versu thinks he does though. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's trying to figure out if he if he can finagle something here. Okay. Well, that shadow step would have been kind of cool with the SI agent. Exactly. It, was the, it would have been the same damage, though. And misdirection oh, oh is actually pretty big here because oh my goodness, he can't attack. That's it. Oh, no, no. This is... Oh, have, no. He could no, potentially... No, he, uh, can, he can attack with his uh, weapon right here, an SI7 agent. Oh, yeah. wait. No, no, no. No, no. He had, yeah, he oh, there had, it is. Eviscerate uh, SI7 agent. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. You got you to gotta lead. You have to lead because both of those cards are combos. Correct. So, yep, yes. There you're it 100%. Is. There we have it. All right, so the rogue nice. comes back, and it does actually defeat the hunter there in what was as close of a game as you can possibly get. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. One, one tie. I want, I want to see a close series, so this yeah. is good stuff right here. Yeah, I'm looking but forward to it. And so now we have a, uh, a hunter deck down, and we have a druid deck down. So we're going to see what comes out against this rogue, because we have not seen this rogue lose yet.